to open your eyes and watch. Identifying different type PBT types. The following information is aimed to provide the starting point for identifying different terrier PBT types. Should not be seen as an exhaustive list of characteristics, and further expert advice and guidance must be sought at an early stage. Though no photographs are provided to assist with this, for these animals are not very different, yet have a substantial number of characteristics present and be considered a PBT. When first viewing the dog, it should appear square from the side, and its height to the top of its shoulder should be the same distance as from the front of its shoulder to the rear point of its head. Its height to weight ratio should be proportioned. Its coat should be single coat. Its head should appear to be wedge shaped from the side to the top, but rounded and moving in front. The head should be around two thirds width of shoulders and 25% wider of cheeks than at the base of the skull. This is due to cheek muscles. The distance from the back of the head to between the eyes should be about equal to the distance from between the eyes to the top of its nose. The dog should have a good depth in the top of it, of head to bottom of the head, and straight to box like the muzzle. Its eye should be small to the set, triangular when viewed from the side and a little bit from the front. Shoulders should be wider than the rib cage or eight of the rib. Its elbows should be flat with its front legs running parallel to the spine. Its forelegs should be heavy and solid and nearly twice the thickness of the hind legs which are below the hock. The rib cage should be deep and springs straight out from the spine. It should be elliptical in cross section, tapering at the bottom and not barrel casting. It should have a tail that hangs down like an old fashioned pump handle with a round pop. It should have a broad hip that allows good attachment of muscles in the hindquarters and hind legs. Its knee joint should be in the upper third of the body's rear leg, and the bones below that should appear light, fine, and springy. Overall, the dog should have an athletic appearance. The standard weights with no mention of ears, colour, height, or weight. This is a pit bull type of dog. He makes his owners look tougher. They brought him for protection. He is quite a big dog, and only young so can be boisterous around new people. He loves people. The neighbours filed a complaint because the dog barks when the owners leave the house. The owners work full time and regret buying him, but he makes his owners look tough. Whilst you are watching and listening to my performance lecture, I want you to also watch the dog breathing. He is listening and watching too. He is quite calm and relaxed at the moment. He may fall to sleep. If he snores at any point, don't laugh, laugh at him, although it can be quite loud. He may dream. They say dogs dream of their owners or other dogs they meet that day. Maybe he's dreaming of his favourite toy. Maybe he's dreaming of his owners playing in the park.
interactions with non-human animals on a daily basis, whether that be with birds or squirrels, which we may stop to enjoy for a few seconds or ignore a more common one. It is clear to identify that non-human animals make up a part of our environment as human animals. This is particularly evident when it comes to domesticated non-human animals. I'll quickly point out here that my decision in using the term human animal and non-human animal in order to bring to the fore that humans are animals and that we should avoid making such grand distinctions between ourselves and thousands of different species as other. Domesticated non-human animals can vary at their levels of domestication and involvement within human society, from cows that we milk and eat to cats that we feed and allow to roam freely in their urban lifestyles. Dogs are undoubtedly the most domesticated non-human animal in Western society. With an undertone of responsibility attached to the process of domestication, it only seems right to look after those that we have often violently exploited and tamed. One such example of how there is an intertwined interspecies relationship with our dogs is through the laws that are, that are enforced upon them and us. In the UK, under the Dangerous Dogs Act of 1991, Amendment 1997, under Section 1.1, there are four banned breeds of dog. The Fida Brasiliero, the Dogo Argentino, the Japanese Tosa, and the Pit Bull type of dog. All these dogs were originally bred to make protection for fighting dogs. However, dog fighting has been banned since the Humane Act of 1835. Unfortunately, dog fights only need a relatively small pit to take place and has to be, therefore, much harder to enforce compared to bull or bear baiting. Underground, illegal dog fighting still takes place to this day. Out of these four bound breeds, the Pitbull Terrier is, of, is by far the most villainous. Media representation of this type of dog tends to be of baby killer, murderers, and bloodthirsty. This seems wholly unfair when it is, in fact, the Labrador that has been reported to have bit, bitten the most people in the UK. This is not surprising, seeing as Labrador is one of the most popular types and breeds of dog in this country, but highlights here how it is deed, not breed, that really matters. This next section that I am about to read is from the Death of Guide to Enforcers concerning the dangerous dog laws in a guide published in March 2009. Note this guide has not been updated since. Section 1 prohibits the ownership of certain types of dogs, the ones I showed you in the previous slide, unless they are exempted on the index of exempted dogs. Prosecutions can be brought before a court based on just the physical characteristics of the dog, i.e. simply what it looks like. Section 2 requires that the owner is brought before a magistrate's court on a complaint, and if the magistrate is satisfied that the complaint is justified, they can make any order they feel appropriate to require the owner to ensure that the dog is kept under proper control when its food cases are destroyed. Importantly, this is regardless of whether the dog is in private or public place. No proceedings must be commenced by way of a complaint. Section 3 creates a criminal offence of allowing any dog, i.e. of any breed or type, to be dangerously out of control in public place or a place to where it is not allowed. A dog can be regarded as being dangerously out of control on any occasion where it causes fear or apprehension to a person that it may injure them. This is the front cover of the Death of Guide to Enforcers for those who are enforcing these rules and other dogs. And I think, uh, so the photo was taken by the RSPCA of the Pitbull type dog, and I think summarizes the issue surrounding the stigmatization of this particular dog breed. This dog may just as well be running after a tennis ball or could be trying to catch a treat being thrown towards it. If a dog is seized, it does not necessarily mean that the dog will be put to sleep. There are lawyers and solicitor groups such as Weldon Law who specialise in dog laws. There will then be a trial to investigate whether the dog is of the type and then through behavioural assessments determine if the dog is a potential threat to the general public. If the do dog is being safe, then the dog will be registered on the exempted index. This means that the dog will have to be neutered, microchipped, muzzled when out in public or in the car, kept on a fixed length lead out in public or in the car, cannot be walked by a person under the age of 16, and requires that the owner purchase 
third party liability insurance for the lifetime of the dog. I am a strong believer, however, that muzzling and keeping the dog on me does not take away from their quality of life. Private fields can be rented where the dog can be off lead and does not wear a muzzle to engage with stimuli that are muzzle and being on lead may get it. These trials can be thousands of pounds, which the owners of the dog need to pay themselves with no support from criminal legal aid. So this table came from the A Freedom of Information Act from 2019, and I think it highlights and reinforces again the victimisation of the Pitbull Terrier type dog. Again, it wasn't wholly clear in this Freedom of Information Act, but I'm assuming this is the current record for the type of dogs on the list at the moment. Um, and it just, yeah, I think they're going to speak for themselves. The next slide I'm going to show you is a footage taken from a Sky News report from 2016 about the status dogs unit, which is the SDU as part of the Metropolitan case. This unit is a team of officers dealing specifically with dangerous dogs. The section I'm going to show you is a raid on a house where 13 dogs were seized by the police. just makes it complicated. The challenge for Sergeant Peter Madden is to find the dogs with all their suspects is tipped off. The nature of this type of job is that actually something might change and we might need to make some very quick and rapid operational decisions. I wouldn't be at all surprised if we end up having to dash from one address to another if intelligence suggests we need to be elsewhere. <laughs> The team arrives at one of the addresses. Good morning, sir. How are you here, Mr. Cook? Good morning. What was the job? Good morning. How are you here? 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 Good morning. There's nothing here, but news comes in. Good morning. Stay in the room. Six rooms on the other address. Thank you. Hello, please come and open the door. Hello, man. Okay, so you're not sure, please. Okay. We're all still in the garden. Okay. The main subject came out not the agitated. You've got to be quick. If you're, you know, if you're behind the curtain, if you're too slow, all of a sudden you've got a nightmare. And if you don't get control of the dog quickly when you've got an opportunity to, then potentially the dog joins in, gets excited, starts fighting people, and you're in a difficult position. The intel suggested the dogs didn't go out very often. You can see the back drawers are very long. The dogs don't get taken out of the the candle is in the garden. Desperately emaciated. It's got no ears. Whether that's been cut off to make it look harder, I don't know. But this is a very, very skinny dog. Purely simply because it's not been fed enough, or it's got a medical issue that they haven't treated. Over the years, we've heard lots of reports when we're going on raids of dogs that are trained to attack on the word of command. That's rarely the case. Very, very rarely. Our own police dogs are trained in bite work. 
but they're not aggressive in the normal course of events. This dog, when we came down here, was absolutely fine towards us. It was growling and telling us to go away because we were invading its space and we just gave it a bit of time, made friends with it, and the dog's good as gold with us now. And that's, what, that's our preferred option, and that's normally the case more often than not. Come on, Mark, please don't make the accident you are there. Come on, come on. Sergeant Madden, we're going to later. He's got feeling like a candle. He's spot on. <laughs> In total, 13 dogs have been seized from this morning's raids. Not all are bad breeds. The SDU must decide which ones are. <laughs> Confiscated animals are held at police contracted kennels. Their fate is decided. For the dogs that end up in these kennels because of welfare issues, it's the best thing that can happen to them. There's expert veterinary care, there's regular exercise, food and water, and they're probably given more attention than they've ever received in their lives. But the banned breeds, like this pitbull terrier puppy, being here is the canine equivalent of death row. Identify. So out of those 13 dogs that were seized, eight were rehomed. The other six were destroyed due to either health issues such as with the kangaroo or because they were bad breeds or types. The next short clip I'm going to show you is from a BBC3 documentary with Professor Breen where he meets a family who lost their daughter due to a dog attack that took place in the private property. This case instigated a change in the law in 2014 which meant that people could be prosecuted on private land. The dogs involved in this fatal attack were not bad rates. It's Tuesday night in East London. Dogs like this bit of terrier are being bred recently in London. And we've got the dog in a cage, which doesn't particularly think of suitable for the joint action in the evening season. You know, they're not going to use a picture of one line that's back of a child like with Ben Carl. We all know the sensation of those things to some people. People like to go and to put things in boxes, it makes it really, really easy, doesn't it? That's a better dog, that's a better dog, that's a better dog, and there's no compassion in it, so you don't have to think about it twice, it's just a double dog, therefore it shouldn't be in But this image doesn't tell the whole story. The 27 fatalities caused by dogs in the last decade. 19 caused by legal people. Surely the law is failing. In 2013, one case hit the headlines. It involved breeds that weren't bad. Jane Anderson had gone to visit her friend, but she died alone at the house. When the police arrived at the house yesterday afternoon, they found Jade and five dogs. Four of them were completely out of control and had to be destroyed. Jade had returned from local shops for food and was alone in the house at the time. Although the police tape says this is a crime scene, it's not clear if any offence has been committed. None of the dogs was thought to have been of a breed bound under the dangerous dogs' laws. The dogs were rarely walked and were underfed. Jay's father, Mike, was at home at the time of the attack. A neighbor knocked on the door. Uh, just said, Where's Jane? Yeah. Um, I said, Oh, I'm not seeing her. She's, she stayed at her phone box. And then um, she said, um, I think something's happened on the corner. But I could just tell by looking at her face. Like, so I, just, I just knew she got, got instinct on you know, your children. I just got in the car and rallied my mate, basically. Um, parked the car in, it, it was all, it was all calm enough. Um, it, it's, it's really hard to explain. There are some very clear problems with this situation. Why was the girl a minor in a house on her own with five dogs she didn't know very well? Why were the dogs in the hotel? And were the dogs simply after the food the girl had brought from the 
into the house where perhaps the girl became frightened, started screaming or panicking, and the situation escalated. This awful tragedy could very easily be avoided through responsible ownership. The alternatives are quite unique in this country as Blue Cross, the RSPCA, the Kennelquell and Jobs Trust have all put forward campaigns to appeal BSL or breed specific legislation, but were denied in 2019 based on the fact that if the law hadn't been in place, how many more people could have died due to job tax? Of course, you can't prove a negative, but there has been some positive movement in the state where pit bulls are also bad groomed. In Virginia, they now have a no breed specific legislation, which means that there should be no prejudice or discrimination attached to certain job types. I propose that this is something that should also happen in the UK. If the owner is deemed unfit to look after the dog, then the dog should be placed with a rescue or sanctuary to ensure the dog be rehomed to a responsible owner. Having worked in a stressful environment like the kennel to myself, I have been bitten by a Collie Cross called Judy, a Patterdale Terrier called Basil, a Staffordshire Bull Terrier called Jack, and grabbed, lunged towards, and growled by many other breeds of dogs, including Husky crotch, Crosses, Lurchers, and American Bulldogs. The plethora of behaviour that I have encountered and the amazing transformations I have witnessed, as well as sad losses, means that instilling responsible ownership is. is in potential dog owners must be the key requisite for, re for the removal of breed specific legislation. This is a pit bull type of dog. He doesn't realise he's different to other dogs because he has wide set cheeks and an old fashioned ponder like tail. Whilst you are leaving, I want you to watch the dog breathe. He's listening and watching as you leave as well. He's quite calm and relaxed at the moment. He may fall asleep. If he snores, you don't laugh and point at him, although it can get quite loud. He may dream. They say dogs dream of their owners, or other dogs they have met that day. Maybe he's dreaming of his favourite toy. Maybe he's dreaming of his owners, playing the park. Yeah, just put up your hands if you have any questions. I'll put some music on in the background. 